Welcome to the Let's Check Out series, where I check out games and then you make a choice. Do you want to check it out or not? If you enjoy the video and you want to see more in the future, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon as well. Today we're going to look at Age of Darkness Final Stand, a dark fantasy survival RTS that was released on Steam on the 8th of October of this year. Now, I'm a big fan of RTS style games. In fact, they are my favourite style of games. The first game I remember playing, being Warcraft Orcs and Humans, instilled a love of RTS games. The idea of building a kingdom of great warriors and expanding my domain was forever ingrained in my imagination. But Age of Darkness gives a different feel. No longer was I building a kingdom to conquer others. No, I was frantically preparing my forces to hopefully not get swallowed up by an ever-increasing army of horrors and I was loving every second of it. The following short review is based on only playing the game for one hour. Why only one hour, you might be asking? Because in my opinion, just my personal opinion, if a game doesn't catch your attention after an hour, not even a little bit, be that through story, gameplay, or artistic styling, then it's probably not worth your time or money. Now with all the reasoning opening stuff taken care of, let's dive into the game. The first thing you will need to know before buying the game is that this is an early access title and only has one active mode at the moment. That mode being survival mode. I am keen to see what they do with the campaign mode later down the line, but for now we'll at least have something to keep us occupied. Once you make your mode selection you'll be greeted with a hero selection screen which is pretty neat. At the moment there is only one hero to select from, the hero itself has a few abilities that you can unlock once you level them up enough. Leveling up your hero requires you to kill hordes of enemies, and when your hero becomes stronger, it is a noticeable difference, eventually being able to cut down several enemies with one swing, making them feel incredibly mighty. The game runs on a basic formula. Build a base, collect resources, kill enemies, and explore the map. That all sounds pretty simple, right? Wrong. Yes, you build your base, but you need to make sure you don't build anything in an area that you're not willing to defend vigorously. Yes, you collect resources, but your resources start with an incredibly small cap, which requires you to spend those resources on anything you can so as to not waste time and effort. You can increase your resource cap, but the bigger your base gets and the more you need to manage, uh, the more you need to increase your cap. Yes. You kill enemies and explore the map, but you don't want to go super gun-ho about it. Because once you go through a set number of nights of maybe fending off a small tiny group of enemies that might attack your outpost, all hell breaks loose. So you want to avoid losing your troops as much as you can, because once a troop gets enough kills, it becomes emboldened, which makes it a bit more powerful. So you want to make sure you keep them alive. After a set amount of nights go by in game, you will get a warning stating that the Death Knight is approaching. In a Death Knight, spelt with an N, not a K, you'll have a massive horde of enemies spawn from an unstable crystal, and then they will all make a beeline for your base, in an attempt to wipe you out. The first Death Knight was on the fourth night, which I had to fend off 150 enemies, which wasn't too bad. The second Death Knight, which happened on the ninth night, I was swarmed with 600 of them, which is a 4 times multiplier from the initial one, and trust me, it gets pretty hairy. Luckily I was still in the early stuff, so I only got attacked on one side of my base, but as time goes on, that number will increase due to more crystals being unstable and enemies spawning from multiple crystals at a time. So you're eventually going to be attacked on all sides. At least, that's what I believe happens based on the screenshots on Steam. I mean, just fucking look at them all. But, once you survive through a Death Knight, you will get rewarded with a permanent stat boost, which makes it all worth it. You can also spend resources on upgrading your troops to have more health, damage, attack speed, and a couple of other perks. But you can only get one upgrade per tier, so you need to make your choice wisely. The art style itself, it's simplistic but beautiful. The sound design is also simplistic but beautiful. Sound the horns. Ready Darkness for action. Approaches. Exploring the map is an absolute thrill because you find different places that then give you different rewards if you clear them. 
So in closing, after playing for just an hour, getting through two Death Knights and seeing a little bit of what the game has to offer, I can 100% say, if you're a fan of RTS games, tower defense games, Zerg defense games, then this is a must have. And for only $31.95 Australian dollars, which comes out to just under 25 US dollars, I think it's an absolute steal for the quality and constant replayability. There are a few things that I personally think they can do better, like allowing your troops to move through or around buildings even if the buildings are right next to each other, but that's more of a personal thing. I like to keep my houses all together to save on space, but the troops can't move through it even though visually it looks like they should be able to. In short, for only an hour of playtime and for the price the game is set at, I give Age of Darkness Final Stand a solid 8 shopping carts out of 10. Why not go and check it out? And again, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff, and I'll see you all in the next one.